So in previous videos, we have seen Newton's first law of motion. Newton's first law of motion says, in the absence of an external force, an object will not accelerate. Then we mathematize that into Newton's second law of motion, which tells us exactly how it will accelerate. That is to say, it is proportional to the mass. Now, it's time to deal with Newton's third law of motion, which in a lot of... In a, in a sense, I think is the most confusing of them and probably the most commonly misunderstood. Newton's third law says this. This is how it's normally stated. To every action, and remember what an action is. This is an older word, which basically means force. It's the idea of actualizing some sort of potential state of motion. Uh, which requires a force to accelerate the object into that state of motion. To every action, there corresponds an equal, that is to say, exactly as strong, but oppositely directed I'm going to say action. Most people are going to say reaction here, and I don't mind that. It, it, it is a reaction. But the, the reason I don't like that is because that implies some sort of preference. If I have an action and a reaction, what we think of, I, I'm going to use the word reaction, by the way. I'm just writing it down as action for here. But if we have an action reaction, we think of that as arranged temporally. That is, the action happens first. And then the reaction happens. And in our everyday life, that's, you know, that's how it works out. If someone comes up to you and says, uh, you fool, I hit you, right? That's an action. And then our reaction is, how dare you? Uh, that's our reaction. But, and they necessarily happen in time. But that's not what's happening here. Here we have an action in another action that happened simul that happened simultaneously. There is no lag. It, it, also, it, it doesn't matter which one you would consider the action and which the reaction. They both come together. So I usually just say obviously directed action. Uh, I will call it a reaction. Just as long as we understand first that reaction does not mean that it's somehow secondary or somehow later in time. They happen at the same time. <clears throat> okay, so here's why this is misunderstood. I'm, I'm about to, to write some stuff or draw some things and write them down, and they're going to be wrong. I'm telling you how this law is misunderstood. Okay, so let me put a person on the floor, and let me draw a free body diagram of this person. And they're sitting still. She's just kind of hanging out doing nothing. So we have mg, which is the force of gravity, and then we have the normal force from the floor. And if she's in a state of equilibrium, what we say is that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. If I unpack that, I get n minus mg is equal to zero, and that means that n is equal to mg, and I go, aha, Newton's third law in action, right? The normal force is equal to the gravitational force, and they're oppositely directed. So this is Newton's third law. I have an action-reaction pair. That is false. This is not an action-reaction pair. I told you I was going to use the word, and that's okay. I don't hate the word. I just want you to understand that reaction doesn't involve preference. Okay, not an action-reaction pair. These are not. How do I know? Because these two forces are acting on the same object, to wit, the person. If an action-reaction pair occurs, or if, if both of those forces are exerted on the same object, nothing ever happens, right? Every force you apply will be canceled by its reaction. If I apply 10 newtons down on an object and that object uh, has 10 newtons the other direction applied to it, then it doesn't do anything, right? If you think of this as an action-reaction pair, that, that results in a universe in which nothing moves, or nothing accelerates, I should say. Nothing happens. And that is clearly not this universe. 
So an action-reaction pair are exerted on different objects. That means they will never appear on the same free body diagram. All right, never ever, because free body diagrams only concern one object. And if these are exerted on different objects, you will never see them uh, rea uh, exerted, or sorry, you will never see them appear on the same free body diagram because they're not exerted on the same object. Okay, now that's what it doesn't mean. <laughs> this is what it doesn't mean, this is true. Uh, so, w what do we mean? Where is the action-reaction pair for... I mean, if, if Newton's third law is right, each one of these forces has a corresponding force that is equal in magnitude in opposite direction. Where is it? Well, the gravity one might be the easiest one to talk about. For, the purposes, for these purposes, let me dispense with the mg and go back to my f sub g. Because I'm, I'm not going to have to assume that I'm at or near the surface of the Earth. All right, I, I'm definitely not an artist, but sure, that kind of looks like North South America, maybe. There's Europe and Africa, and you know, uh, it's terrible. I'm a terrible artist. Uh, but that's okay. Here's the Earth, right? And here is you. You might be on the Earth. You might be away from the Earth. You might be out in space. You might be halfway across the solar system. The fact is, the Earth is exerting a force on you. Gra <clears throat> excuse me, gravity's a thing. And if I draw a free body diagram of you, there you are. You've got this force of gravity from the Earth. Now, if I'm going to draw a free body diagram on the Earth, now what I have to say is the Earth has this force of gravity exerted on it from you. There's the action-reaction pair. The Earth exerts a force on you, which we call gravity. Uh, that is to say, it attracts you. Well, according to Newton's third law, you also attract the Earth. You exert the same amount of force back on the Earth as the Earth exerts on you, right? Exerts on you. And as soon as I say that, people say, well, why, why do I fall down then and I never see the Earth falling up? Well, to answer that, I've got to invoke Newton's second law, right? If the force acting on you is gravity, uh, well, your mass is reasonably small, and that small force is able to accelerate you pretty rapidly or pretty robustly. The Earth, if this is dealing with the Earth, the Earth's mass is ginormous, right? Have you seen these planets? They're ginormous. And the force you exert on the Earth, the Earth basically doesn't care. So it doesn't accelerate at all. Right, uh, And also, there are other forces being exerted on the Earth from all the other 7 billion people on the planet. So they all tend to cancel out because we're spread out pretty evenly. Not that I think it would matter anyway. Uh, we just don't have enough mass. Or sorry, the Earth has way too much mass to be affected. But here's your action-reaction pair. Free body diagram of you, you get one. Free body diagram of the Earth, you get the other. Uh, let's look at the other one in here, the normal force. All right. Here's a free body diagram of you standing on the floor. You've got mg. You've got the normal force. Well, if I were to draw a free body diagram on the floor, I would draw this, the force that you uh, exert on the floor. Right here is the action-reaction pair. The floor exerts a force on you but you are also exerting a force on the floor. There might be other forces acting here. I'm sure gravity is acting on the floor too, and there's other support forces. But here's the action-reaction pair. Not on the same object. All right, so hopefully that clears up a little bit. Newton's third law is something you just have to think about for a little while. Uh, there was a couple months in my life, actually, when I was just learning this stuff that I... I really couldn't understand why anything ever moved, or I should say anything ever accelerated, because all these forces should be canceling out. And then when I finally, someone finally showed me, no, the forces are acting on different objects. That's why the acceleration is possible, um, because they don't cancel out, because they're not acting on the same object. So just think about it, live with it for a little while. One day you'll wake up and it'll just go ding, and it'll be all, all good.